so you saw Misty and the kids going to get some pumpkins for fall decorations just for fun so they're doing that uh, Aiden's doing the chores uh, for the animals uh, I do morning chores with the milking Aiden does kind of a, a lunchtime chore and that's when we feed all the other animals and then we do our, our evening chores as well so Aiden just finished those what we're gonna do is go ahead and hook up the water for um, the peas uh, usually we like watering in the mornings or in the evenings really more in the mornings it's better because that way you don't have to worry about uh, wetness in the soil going into the night so we like to water in the mornings but this morning we couldn't get to it so I'm gonna go ahead and water them they don't need it per se because they got watered heavy the other day but I want to go ahead and just give a good coating to them just because we're not getting a little natural rain right now so they're looking great and like I said our next project is gonna be the greens right next to it and then the soil blocks of course inside so it's looking good hadn't seen any uh, movement of actually anything coming up yet which is okay because it's not expected probably to come up for at least another two weeks uh, the potatoes are doing great those beds look good they've not started coming up but there's been some movement in the soil so which means they're hopefully growing some roots and also uh, making their way through the top so let's go and get these watered and then we're going to have to move a few little cows we got um, the start of two of them moved and then we got to move uh, Ike away from who he's used to and, and go ahead and put the dairies together and then the young cows and the bull together. So we're gonna get all that done today and then we'll wrap it up. All right, we had a little spare time. So we are gonna go ahead and cut some of this old brush. Um, always remember when you're cutting brush this time of year, if you're getting ready for deer plots or if you're cutting for hay or whatever it is, um, always watch where you're cutting so you're not cutting down certain goldenrod and certain things that are blooming for your bees and also for your other pollinators. So we're not cutting that, but basically in this old field, you can see where I'm at. Okay, this is basically a cross going to the backs of our property where our pumpkins are. There's our cows. There's our big garden right there with the, um, the permaculture chickens. All that's right there. House is back this way behind these trees. So where I'm at is I hunt on that far part like I, I showed you what we, we cut the other day. And I'm going to come around. There's our pine thicket. And this is the right of way going this way. Now. Um, me and a cousin of mine have a plot, a hunting plot, straight down there. You can see it if you look real closely across over here. Now, what we're doing, what he did, he cut his plot and all that, but right here where all this brush is, this is hopefully going to be our new sheep plot. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get it kind of cut, clean it up, make sure it's ready to go, and this will be either where we either put a new paddock for the cows, which I don't see, um, because I really don't need the space for the cows unless we really grow our herd. But really this is going to be a place that we can put our sheep. And it's going to be basically a, a smaller four paddock rotation right here. And then they're going to go behind the cows too. So this is what we're working on right now. We had a little extra time. So uh, we're not buying the sheep yet. But if we go ahead and prepare and get everything ready. That way when we get the sheep it's just basically putting the sheep netting up. And we're ready to rock. So just wanted to show you that. Go get all that cut kind of show you exactly where I'm at on our land. So we're gonna get this done right now. I'm a determined person, but I, you know, I never know what, if something's gonna work or not. So we're gonna try something. From Pratt Family Homestead, uh, started doing his own hay. And uh, of course he doesn't have a baler, he's like me. I can't justify it, so I've never just thought about just doing my own hay. So I let this grass get high. This is the back side of our property. And uh, over here on this side, not, not this back side, but this side all over here. So I, I basically I cut it high with a bush hog and then dropped it down low and cut it real scapped it almost and then i piled this up and look how I, this is a huge pile i've already got some in the back of the truck right there so i'm gonna try to see if the cows eat it it smells so good you know hey hey just smells so good when it's fresh it smells so so good so we're gonna pick it up dry some of it so i'm gonna see if they'll eat it raw like this and green uh, just because it's fresh bahia grass 
but then I'm gonna see if uh, I can put some in the barn and let it dry and see if it tr truly turn to a good hay and see if they like it. If so, it's gonna make me feel like it's a successful thumbs up on this. So um, it's just something that I, I've never done. So I, I, I'm excited to do it. I, I, I've had a blast doing it. So I've got this monster pile, and I'm gonna try to get it into the truck somehow. Uh, with either the backhoe, or excuse me, with the tractor, or with this pitchfork. I've been throwing most of it with the pitchfork because I don't want to get any dirt or any ground with the with the bucket. So I'm gonna see if we can get it up, but I'm kind of excited. We still got about two more truckloads. We have one more pile here, and then one more pile way down there. But I'm very pleased. I'm gonna now go take it back, put some out while it's still kind of damp and wet for them, and then I'm gonna put the rest in the barn and try to dry it. So. Man, I'm kind of happy with this. I'm anxious to see how it does. And if it does well, we can cut all that, which is about another two or three acres, which that would probably be almost enough for me and my cows for the winter. So we're gonna see what happens. Let's see if they like this right here. Well, I gave them a trial run and they're actually loving it. So they're eating it both. Uh, Elsa just ate a ton of it. Now she's gonna get some water. She's ate some. I'm just gonna leave a pile there and let them just eat it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put out probably half the truck here and let them just eat it as almost like a baleage, like a wet hay. Um, and that way they can enjoy it as a as what it is now, just cut hay or cut grass basically. And then the rest I will actually just plan on putting it up uh, in the barn. So uh, seemed like they enjoyed it. Look, she's standing by the truck. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed the day. I hope this video has been fun. Uh, I told you I was I was expiring to, to cut my own hay and see if it worked. And so far, so good. Uh, you know, I mean, think about it. Here, a, a bale of hay will cost anywhere from $35 to $50 a bale. So I've probably got two or three bales just on the ground right now. And I've still got several acres I can utilize. But just absolutely pretty hay. It smells great. So. Very pleased with it. If you hadn't subscribed to the Max, please do. Uh, if you're liking our content, tell us. If you don't, then tell us, and we will uh, try to do our best to accommodate. Thanks so much, and God bless, and happy homesteading, y'all.